I'm here at the Guy V. Lewis Development Facility, and with me is a guard for the number three Houston Cougars men's basketball team, Ryan Alvin. Ryan, really appreciate you taking out the time today. Thank you for having me. How are you doing, man? Good. Yeah. Yes, sir. Doing good. Yeah, so. you know, I've been connecting with you for some time, so it's good to be able to, you know, finally catch up and, yes, you know, be able to meet with you. So just want to hear a little bit from you right out the gate. What, how do you feel about the difference between the American Athletic Conference compared to playing in the Big 12 and seeing the team? Um, compete in this new conference? Um, yeah, this season just been a lot of fun. Um, I feel like every game has been tough. Um, you know, no matter if it's at home or away, like we're going to get everybody's best shot. And I'll just say it's been cool to see um, some of the best atmospheres in college basketball, you know, Kansas, Cincinnati, yeah. BYU, all of them have like been really everywhere we go um, has been like packed out. And it's just a Cool environment to um, play in. Yeah, you know, the road environments in Big 12, every game is tough, and, and you guys have been really able to battle through it, especially in Cincinnati last week. So, I do want to hear a little bit from you about how you really got into basketball. So, how did you, you know, get into basketball, and did you always want to be a basketball player? Um, yeah, so growing up, I kind of played um, baseball and basketball. Um, and then I was kind of really better at baseball for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but then as I got older, it kind of got. Um, boring for me and I really it really wasn't my passion um, and I just always had a passion for basketball um, my dad kind of introduced me to the sport from an early age and my mom played in college so mm -hmm. I was just kind of around basketball and um, you know I really just fell in love with the game and always practicing and one thing I really like about it is like you usually get out of it what you put in so mm -hmm. the more success I had um you know, just got more and more fun. And then, you know, I just, as I got better and progressing, I just started having higher aspirations and goals. And that's kind of how it started. Yeah, and here you are today. And, <laughs> um, how did you decide to ultimately join um, the University of Houston? How did that process go for you, especially, you know, you being a walk-on? And how, how did that go for you? Um, yeah, so it was kind of a process that um, happened when I was like a junior, going to be a senior. Mm -hmm. Um, my junior senior summer, I had a more um, kind of D2 and majority D3 schools um, looking at me. I was kind of like an undersized uh, player okay. at the time, uh, and I still really needed to be developed. So I didn't have a lot of the D2 and D, uh, D1 offers. Um, so I believe that somebody reached out to me about the possibility, um, like, I should look into being a walk-on because mm -hmm. they thought, like, with my work ethic and how much I love the game and my future, I want to coach. So they, um, with all those traits, they tell me, you know, you might want to look into being a walk-on um, yeah. somewhere. So I kind of, you know, started to do my research on it a little bit. And then um, I had a guy kind of helped me get in contact with a coach here. Um, and there was a, a bat an NCAA basketball academy tournament or camp yeah. that just happened to be at UH but it wasn't like UH affiliated and uh there's a bunch of coaches there and uh coach Kenlin kind of came to see me play um because somebody had told him about me um and so came to see me play and then um you know they did their due diligence as far mm -hmm. as like the recruiting thing yeah. and then they kind of um reached out to me about the possibility um of being a walk-on and then uh, I came to a practice here yeah. to watch, um, and I just loved it. And then uh, Coach Kellen came to visit me at my high school uh, one day for a practice, and I think I came to like a Cincinnati game a few years back. And I just fell in love with like the family atmosphere, um, the culture, and I really like. I wanted to try to be the best player I could be um, and achieve my maximum potential, and I thought that. With all the resources here and um, the great coaches, I thought this would give me the best shot to do that. Yeah, and you mentioned Kellen and, you know, this coaching staff. How, have, how would you say they have really impacted you? Especially, like, you talked about before, but also now once you've joined the program. How, how would you like this so summarize that? I would say life-changing. Yeah. Um, just, you know, they're so, like, hands-on. Um, they want you to be your best. They're going to push you to be your best and, you know, Whenever, whenever you need anything, whether it's on or off the court, um, they're going to make sure um, they're there for you. Um, they, they coach us tough, but it's because that they love us 
and they want to see us um, be successful for years to come. So I would just say I can't thank them enough for all that they do for not only me, but everybody on the team, because I know it's not that way um, every every um, for every team, you know, so yeah. it's just a blessing. Yeah, you know, I think the fans here are really thankful that the Samsons are, are leading the way here in Houston. And um, was there any particular experience in, in like your childhood that you think really impacted your life that I think that really helped you into becoming the person that you are today? Um, um, the underdog all the time. Um, you know, I was always good, but I wasn't like as talented, naturally talented as a lot of um, guys growing up. So I just really had to spend more time perfecting my craft and just I try to pride myself on being the hardest worker mm -hmm. um, because I feel like I can bridge the gap a little bit um, if I continue to work hard. So I would just say that's not a particular story, but just yeah. kind of like that characteristic mm -hmm. of having to do that for so long, I think that um, really has helped me now. Uh, and I think it will really pay dividends in the future as well, like having that work ethic and just, you know, being the underdog and trying to, you know, continue to be my best. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people love that underdog story and we, a lot of people love it when you enter the game, they, they're they chanting your name, we want Elvin. Yeah. How does that make you feel when um, for Tita Center's doing that? It kind of like caught me off guard um, at first, you know. Um, but I've learned to embrace it. Um, I kind of, you know, I mean, there's other people on the team too, and I want to see see them like yeah. uh, do their stuff, you know. And then if I have the opportunity to get in, you know, um, they want me to like shoot from half court and stuff, <laughs> but I want to come in and play the right way, and, you know, impact winning and just continue to, you know, do the right things. And uh, but you know, I've embraced that um, mm -hmm. just because it means that. You know, people respect you and appreciate what you're doing. So I thank the fans for that for sure because, you know, it, it means a lot that they, you know, despite um, despite everything, like, that they love me and appreciate all that I do. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I definitely say you're a crowd favorite, you know, especially <laughs> among the students. I, can, I believe there's a Ryan Oven fan club, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool, man. And uh, I know you're from Philadelphia, is that correct? Uh, originally, uh, I'm from Philadelphia, but um, that's where my dad and mom and all my family's from. But okay. I grew up in like the Austin area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, were you like a Philly fan growing up? I guess or yes, for sure. Okay. E like a Eagles fan. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Uh, I follow the Phillies, the okay. Eagles, and the Sixers. Yeah. All those teams, not really NHL, the Flyers. Mm, I don't, yeah. but. Uh, those are kind of my teams. So when the Eagles lost in the Super Bowl last yeah. year, I was pretty upset. But uh, you know, I think Philly sports is starting to, you know, have some postseason success. So yeah, I know the Sixers are. Hard. We'll see what they can do this year. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, and just you know, talking about this team, really the consistency of this team. You've been part of this team for a few years. You've been able to really see the success each and every year. What is, what has it been like just to see the consistency of of this group? Um. It's been awesome. I mean, I've had a front row seat to yeah. um, the program uh, for four years. I would say the consistency um, just be comes from, like, uh, the coaching staff and Coach Sampson and the way that, you know, uh, everyone's hold accountable every day, you know. Um, you got to bring it every day. Yeah. Um, there's no there's no game different from the other. You treat them all the same. And Coach always talks about, like, treating each um, – game is a like, separate entity and not like letting how you played one game affect how you're going to play the other game mm -hmm. and then just continue to prepare each game um because the moment that you we stop preparing hard that's the moment that uh we're going to stop having success so the consistency i think just comes from the culture of the program you know that everybody's held to the same standard and um expected to bring be their best every day yeah, and, and how do you kind of view those opportunities that you get, you know, on the floor? I think earlier this year you had a, you had a bloody nose versus oh, yeah. Jackson State. I thought that was, you know, quite eventful. And how do you, I guess, view those opportunities for you to be on the floor and, and take that all in? Um, Just every opportunity I get is a blessing. I mean, because, you know, I'm not entitled to any minutes at all. Um, So the fact that I get the minutes I get is just, like, 
I try to cherish every moment I go out there and um, play as hard as I can. And like I said, I just try to play the right way. Um, and, and you know, Coach Sampson always talks about it. Every possession matters. So when I get in, I try to be the best I can defensively so that um, that way, you know, we continue to hold opponents to low scoring and um, all that. So it's just a lot of fun and um, I'll never take it for granted. Yeah, are there any, like, interesting stories that you've had this year with the team? I know last year the Cougar did a story on you cooking for oh, yeah. some of the other players. Is there anything, you know, are you still doing that? And is there, like, any other interesting stories you have um, this year? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a cook, so, you know, I always kind of, um, during the season, it's kind of hard, but off season I kind of cook some things, you know. A lot of the guys, you know, um, come hang out. I'll give them some food if they're hungry. Yeah. Um Javon is the biggest culprit of that. Yeah. Um, but um, I think this group is just um, very, like, close-knit. Um, I feel like we spend so much time together, um, you know, all live together pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we always know that, like, we have each other's back and, you know, we go through so much together, um, you know, conditioning and during the summer and all that that I feel mm-hmm. like that stuff just brings us closer together. And, you know, um, we hope to be as close off, off the court and on the court, like connected on the court and our defense and offense. So I just think that uh, not really a particular story, but I'll just say an important thing is that this group is like extremely close mm-hmm, as yeah. are like all the teams I've been on here. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that it's mm-hmm. a very close, close knit group. And um, how do you, I guess, see it you know see the other players on this team for as a teammate you know kind of like jamal shed he's been one of the best players in in college basketball this year what has it been like seeing um someone like him um and just your observations about him as a teammate um yeah jamal is our leader um you know there's you know you can say a million things uh yeah. about his importance um mm-hmm. to the program you know me and jamal kind of grew up close to each other he grew up in Maynard, and i grew up in round rock so it's like 20 minutes. So I, okay. I've seen Jamal like grow up, um, you know, these past few years. And it's been like really fun to see his journey. And I remember him in middle school yeah. and all of that. And then now to see him as the best point guard in college basketball and yeah. just the way that he approaches every day, you know, um, you know, he holds guys accountable. Um, but he also makes sure that, you know, he has his, uh, stuff in line too so just seeing the work that he's put in how he's matured um you know it's no surprise to me that he's doing uh what he is and i feel like he's a great leader to the team everybody respects him everybody uh listens to him and really appreciate what he does for the program yeah he's been such a vital force for this team and last question for you what are your, your plans just after uh i know you got a bachelor's right in mm-hmm. sports admin and yeah, and you're doing your business, right? Yeah, Except I'm doing a master's in uh, business too. Okay. So right now I'm just working on that. Um, but you know, uh, one day I hope to be uh, a coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so just uh, continue to play for a while I can, and then yeah. you know, when the ball stops bouncing like it does uh, for everybody at some point, um, you know, I really plan on being a coach uh, or a front office or something like that because mm-hmm. I feel like I have a, a really strong passion mm-hmm. for helping others and, you know, yeah. I want to be involved in the game of basketball because I love it so much and it, I don't know what I would do without it because yeah. it, it constitutes so much of my days and uh, yeah. life. So just being a coach and, you know, I hope uh, I can stay around and just continue to learn uh, from Coach Sampson and his staff. Yeah, maybe you might come back here. Who knows? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. All right, Ryan, really appreciate it, man. So nice. Yes, sir. Thank we'll you. We'll talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. All right. All right thank you.